Today we have a presentation by Tom Smith from the Oxford Consultants for Social Inclusion, which is looking at the patterns of deprivation at multiple levels of geography. And we're going to be doing that using the Instant Atlas double map template. Uh, Tom was one of the founding directors of the Oxford Consultants for Social Inclusion, or OCSI, and they work with public sector organizations at a national, regional, and local level in the UK to develop and interpret the evidence base for tackling social and economic inequalities. So, over to you, Tom. Great. Thanks very much, John. And as uh, John explains, I'm just going to look today, really, at looking at two different levels of geography and how you can get, get out and uh, analyze different data sets to get a richer picture, a more detailed picture of deprivation levels at small areas, for small areas. Now, the work that we've been, that this is based on is, is, is from work we were looking at for the Norfolk Rural Community Council. The index of deprivation is extremely useful. However, the perception for rural areas, it doesn't seem to get under the skin. It doesn't get down to a fine enough level of detail to identify small pockets of deprivation. So what the Community Council in Norfolk was very interested to see was whether you could, you could model or, or in some way come up with an estimate of deprivation levels at a small area and then actually look at those and an analyze and see what you can pick out. As part of the work with the Norfolk Rural Community Council, we developed a model down to output area level. Now, super output areas cover about 1,500 people, so um, fairly fine grains, with something like 32,000 of them across England. Output areas are finer again. There's about five output areas for each super output area, so they cover about 300 people. And what we did was statistically model the data that's down to output area level. I'm not going to go into the detail of that, but the, the, the methodology is all on the web and so on. The project team included members of the index of deprivation team. Just flagging back, then this is Norfolk picking out, again, these most deprived areas. We've got the most deprived 5 and 10% of areas. We can boil in an output area, and you pick up a whole load of new areas. And uh, what we really wanted to do was actually start assessing where the areas that are flagged up by at output area level differ from super output area level. And without some way of doing that, you can, you can cover your floor in detailed maps as we tried to do, but actually you can use the Instant Atlas double map template to really get a, a good look at this. And this is essentially what analysts, researchers should be doing, is digging into data, comparing data sets, indicators, looking in different ways at sort of exploring the data set. So I'm just going to flick over now to the, the Instant Atlas. Now we're showing here the super output areas on the left, that's this map here and the output areas on the right, the more detailed ones. We haven't shown the whole of Norfolk. We've shown just one of the districts, North Norfolk. We wanted to illustrate some of the findings that we came up with that really helped sort of, a, I guess, uncover or unpick some pockets of deprivation in rural areas. Now, in a good old-fashioned style, like here's one I prepared earlier. So rather than starting from scratch, I'm just going to jump straight into something where we, our analysis really picked out some, some interesting information. What we're looking here at here is the, the village of Holt, which is in North Norfolk, just sort of off the coast. Uh, it's commonly perceived as a fairly affluent area. Um, at super output area level, that's on the left, what we're looking at now, Holt is split across two super output areas, one of which is highly underprived, that's the US 742 that I'm highlighting now. The one south of that, in fact going around to the east of the town, is, is, is significantly more deprived. But if we highlight both of them and look in the distribution, this across the bottom of the, uh, the, the bar chart across the bottom, we can see we've got pretty much the least deprived area of all, and that sort of tallies probably with what we were just talking about. We've got something, an area which is, is, is towards the middle of the distribution, significantly more deprived. But however, this still kind of probably throws up a few surprises. Um, compared to, to the sort of overall knowledge of the data we, uh, of the area. Some, the perception is that locally there are some more deprived, high, highly deprived areas, and the data really isn't showing that at super output area level. If we roll across now to the output area level map, what we're seeing here is much more detail. So I can put on actually here the, the super output area level boundaries just so that we know what we're talking about. So here, we've got our highly underprived super output area level. 
as we'd expect, or um, perhaps unsurprisingly, none of the, S none of the output areas, the more, de more detailed output areas, are deprived in this area. They're all sort of light gray on the map. Dark gray areas are more deprived. However, in the adjacent SOA, but just on the outskirts of Holt, we've got two very significantly deprived areas. We can highlight those up. And in fact, if you can see, as I highlight it down the bottom right, that it's actually in the very much more deprived end of the spectrum. We can see this more clearly. We can actually highlight all of the deprived output areas in Norfolk. And these two are highlighted, so in fact, among the most deprived areas of all across, the, across Norfolk as a whole. We don't get the same if we highlight the super output areas, which I've done, but you actually don't see it appearing on the map. Bottom line is, dri drill down to output area to a finer grain level of deprivation, and you don't and you pick out areas of highly deprived of high deprivation which are hidden at super output area level. You can obviously go and do a lot of analysis offline or using sort of the actual numbers and so on. So being able to get to the data itself is pretty useful as you can do here. You can view the data and so on across the uh, 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 rather than just the bar chart. I think the other thing that I wanted to show was you always you should always be looking to back up analysis, back up the sorts of indications that you're getting from one data set from another. I mean, there's a sort of cross-validation, a cross-check, if you like. But it also means that you're uh, uh, <coughs> less likely to, to, to go on the res results from one um, indicator, at a particularly small area level, which might be based on something odd about that area and so on. So for example, what I'd like to do here is bring in some data from ACORN the geodemographic classification, and this is available down to, I think, unit postcode level, but also aggregated up to output area and so on. One of the categories is ACORN is hard-pressed families. So I want just to, to view this. So now the map on the right is showing the percentage of hard-pressed group of families, that's group five in the ACORN classification, um, across at output area level. Again, the dark blue areas are those of the highest percentages. If I just unclear the, the highlighted areas, what we're seeing here is, in fact, showing a similar story to our output area level model of the index of deprivation, that these two output areas are showing extremely high levels, about 50% and 65% of all families in the area are classified as hard-pressed. The point is that you're showing a similar story to the overall output area level index of deprivation. So you can kind of probably go away thinking actually there's a bit more that that gives me a bit more beef to my story in terms of the research okay so just to sort of pull out so I'm going to come back and sort of show the whole the whole of North Norfolk again I mean the story really is that research is about exploring data indicators information and so on you very rarely get the answer straight off the more digging you can do and the more time you have to do that the better if you have tools that can help you do that, that's great. And just to pick, pick up, the deprivation in Holt that we flagged up there, real perception of a wealthy market town. However, areas in, in, the, in the town and just outside flagged up as the most deprived across the region. Um, groups inside Holt have found it very difficult to make the case for funding, for support for local projects, given that perception. There's been little hard evidence of deprivation. So what we're seeing here is how you can help support that local expertise with more detailed quantitative evidence, the sort of thing that EDA and other funders uh, may well kind of take notice of. And finally, just putting up a, 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 a local press article on deprivation lurking behind the it all. Most area, people do associate deprivation with the urban areas across Norfolk, but actually what you're seeing is, is rural poverty being picked out in a bit more detail and uh, actually helping local programs, local interventions, and so on, with the evidence to support local work. Um, here are our details. I'm Tom Smith from OCSI. There's the website details there if you want further information. Um, the host, John Maslin from GeoWise, again, the, the website details. And just to finally say that the, the output area index of deprivation data that we showed and just talked about is available at our website. <laughs>